And, Coach, the crowd in that place yesterday, as I'm sure it was all over Philadelphia, was just so excited, and it's a good feeling, I guess. And as you guys have mentioned, a jumping-off point. How big of a jump was Ben Simmons adding to your roster? How big of a jump was that for you guys last night? I mean, time will obviously tell, but on first reaction, it's just uh, a really good day for the city. You know, you can feel it when you walk around and you just listen to people. I think the city deserves it, and uh, we're just very excited to get him in the program and look forward to coaching him. You know, so much uh, has been made over the last three years of uh, everything that has gone on here. And last night, Ben, was he the type of player that you guys had set out to try to get? I mean, is he that guy that you say, you know what, ending up with a guy like him made everything worth it? Well, I think uh, it sure feels like that now. It, it sure does feel like that. He's such an unusual talent. He's, he's, he's an unusual position. And, uh, you know, for me, just personally, the fact that I coached his father in the late 80s, and you fast forward to 2016, and, you know, here we are with a chance to draft his son as the first pick in the NBA draft. You know, you can't make that stuff up. And so all over the place, I think it's a, it's a good night. How did that relationship help forge this uh, pairing between you and Ben? You know, knowing the father, uh, how much did having that intel really help this process and make it a comfortable transition for him going from college player with a lot of fanfare to a city like Philadelphia, which is, you know, can be tough to play at at times, and for, quite frankly, a team that had 10 victories last year? I feel from just the, uh, the, the human side, the, uh, the attitudinal side, the character side, that because I'm just so uh, aware of his mom and dad, and, uh, you know, just his Australian culture, where he was raised. As you know, you know, I lived in the country for 17 years, and I married an Australian a long time ago. And so I feel the, the knowledge of just the cultural side of things, the character side of things, and then you look at the talent side of things. For me, the package was a no-brainer in that you felt like personally you would coach him, and I hope coach him well. And second of all, that he was a teammate and had the character to fit in from a team concept like we would want. Coach uh, Brown, uh, Brett Brown from the 76ers is with us. Coach, can you, his father mentioned this last night, but can you expand a little um, about how the game in Australia is different? Because the father said, we feel comfortable that you will understand the differences and know, you know, things that he can do and, and maybe they felt that other coaches wouldn't have that understanding about their his son the, the country has been built on on you know mateship there is a there is a true sort of spirit in that country that is first incredibly competitive you know the Australian New Zealand that South Pacific, sort of rugby sporting mentality is is prominent. It's, it's a country of only 19 million people and they are highly competitive and take tremendous pride on taking care of their mate. And there's a premium placed on trying to help teammates. And from a cultural standpoint, it's, it's just beyond sort of uh, exciting and endearing to me that those are obviously two qualities that you want on your own team. You want that. And I feel like, you know, Ben wants to be coached. He wants to be pushed. He wants to be great. And I think that my history with the family and the Australian culture is maybe it gives me a little bit of an advantage to do that better. Uh, Coach, everybody keeps asking Ben about his position um, I don't know that this NBA has positions anymore, but what kind of role, what kind of, um, you know, skill set do you envision to see from him on the floor in an NBA game? I think everybody's going to first be quite um, 
just aware of how good he is in open court. You know, a six foot ten athlete at 245 pounds that can move up and down a basketball court and handle the basketball like a guard the way that he does is kind of jaw-dropping. He really has a gift doing that. Uh, there are times, and I've watched him so much, that you wonder if down the road he may even be a point guard. You know, he has that type of mindset and ball skills and mentality to, to make me say that. Uh, to start with, we'll treat him as sort of a point power forward um, and try to grow him in that capacity, but I think the fans are going to see something very versatile, very gifted. Yeah, a lot has been uh, made of. Uh, here's a guy six foot ten, two hundred forty pounds. Can he play point guard? You think that's something he can do then down the road, but not maybe initially. You know, he he might be able to pull that off straight away, but I I feel that that it's almost uh, cruel, you know, to just give him a ball and say you're going to be an NBA point guard. He's never really played the position. I think the NBA point guard is the hardest position to play. I'm prepared to groom him and see if, we, if we're right, you know, slowly, not just dump it on his doorstep. I think we'll try to build the team to try to identify a starting point guard, grow him accordingly, and, uh, you know, let him learn the NBA landscape. The NBA is very different than, you know, FIBA basketball in Australia or NCAA basketball at LSU. And so that position is the most difficult, and we want to try to be, you know, just wise on how we bring him forward. Now, Coach, uh, we've had a lot of conversations about last year with Okafor and Noel. Now, they're both still here. How does adding a Simmons and possibly a Sarge and maybe Joel, you know, do you look at that and say, this is really enticing, or do you now, because you've admitted that it's been hard to pair the other two guys together, does it get more difficult, or is there a better way that there's more of these guys to kind of put this puzzle piece together? I think everybody understands that, you know, we are not positionally balanced with all those names you just said. And it's part of uh, the responsibility we have to the city to grow the team. Uh, I think if you went to, you know, individuals, if they felt like they just weren't playing and they weren't developing and they weren't growing, it's not good for them to be a part of that either. Uh, it's not anything else but just the realities of building a team in pro sport. And so somewhere out there, there will be the balance of trying to fix this and figure it out. Uh, in the meantime, like you coach my guys, I coach my guys. I, I love coaching those young guys that you just mentioned. And uh, we'll continue to try to get them better. And, uh, you know, Brian Colangelo, who I think's done a great job putting this whole thing together, inheriting what Sam Hinkie established, um, you know, we'll figure it out. But I think, you know, we, we can see that there is a log jam. Uh, when we hear the term light five-on-five five for Joel, is that like him playing with guys like me or a little bit more than that? Uh, you know, what is exactly light five-on-five? Five? What can he do now? I think the, I think the words that we're, we're using is controlled five-on-five, five. and uh, he, he plays against all of our guys and some other NBA guys in a gym, and the word controlled is more as a duration of how long you can do that. Like if you're able to play, say, three games, you know, like, you know. I think we might have lost Coach. We'll uh, try to put him on hold real fast, see if we can't get him in a little bit better spot here. I'm interested to see what he said uh, because he's describing Embiid as playing in a little bit more of a controlled 5-on-5, five five, more so than a quote-unquote light 5-on-5. Five five. But uh, good to hear that he's playing uh, some NBA competition, not with guys like me. And uh, we'll bring Coach back in. Coach, we heard you say uh, more of a controlled 5-on-5 five five for Joel. Well, that's right. And so controlled meaning... You know, there's, there's restrictions on time. Let's say you're going to go play, you know, three games to seven. Let's say you're going to go play, you know, for 35, 40 minutes. And I'm making up numbers, but to make my point, that's what the word control means, just the duration of time 
that he's able to play. So he's able to basically run. I mean, and run, jump, play. He can play. It's just more that you guys are controlling the time aspects. Is that is that what you're saying? That is fair. He he can play. He goes up and down the floor, guards other people. He plays. It's five on five. You mm-hmm. know, just as we know it. And so you know, the only the controlled aspect, as I say, you know, comes into to duration you know we don't want to see him just go for too long of a period of time where where the pounding on his foot is just not wise all right and how is he uh because i i saw him say in a video that he never had pain in his foot at any point really that you know that's why he was very frustrated so is after these five on fives i assume then he didn't have pain then that his foot is responding well to it now it's everything is going just as planned we have Systematic scans, periodic scans, the the stable of people that he has around him to ensure that there is not anything missed. I mean, we are so paranoid and, 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 and meticulous with making sure that we give him everything we can to keep him on a court and, and to keep him healthy. Uh, he, he's been amazing. Like, I can tell just looking at him and his actions that, he understands, you know, like this is his future, and skipping steps on anything with rehab, prehab, diet, whatever, I think he's been A+. Plus and yeah. so far, so good. I was going to say, through this process, he's been a lot more visible. How excited is he? I mean, it seems like he's, like, jumping out, ready to go. Like, I would assume if you guys allowed him to play in the summer, he probably would jump at the opportunity. He, it's one of the things I love about him the most is he truly loves playing. He's highly competitive. He truly loves playing, and I and I agree with you. I feel like if we let him, he would be playing in Utah or in Vegas. Um, there is a bounce to his step. There's a new sort of spirit because the reality of it is he's not that far away from playing, you know, competitive basketball again after all the heartache of two years, I feel like as a city, and even you and I talking now, we, we, we got to remind ourselves that when he comes back, there's got to be some level of forgiveness and tolerance on giving him space to grow. He hasn't played a second of NBA basketball and hasn't played basketball for two, almost two and a half years. Uh, so good news there. You went to Turkey. The last time we talked, you were just about ready to go to Turkey. Um, without really, I, I, you know, Brian mentioned that uh, there's a lot of dialogue there, but what would you see? What, what impresses you about Dario and maybe, uh, you know, as a combination with what you got here because uh, we don't know a lot about him. We haven't seen him. So what do you see from him that excites you about with, with what you already have? Oh, you know, where do, where do I begin? Uh, let's start with defense. Let's start with toughness. Let's start with the city, you know, just looking at this fierce competitor. He, he really, he wears his heart on his sleeve. You can tell by his facial expressions. His game mirrors those things that I just said. He really gets after it. I think the city, from that perspective, is going to love him. Offensively, he's a do-all. You know, I think that Ben Simmons has, can go like a 4-3-2 and maybe 1. I think Dario can go like a 3-4-5. And he is a, he's just a versatile, competitive, another six foot ten, you know, kind of um, all-purpose player. And uh, we, we hope to, you know, figure out his path to our team soon. It's not there yet. But uh, we, I think people will see he also has been worth the wait. Now your uh, second pick in the first round, number 24, uh, um, Luau, how are we saying his name? Sounds good to me. <laughs> he it was it has indicated that he would like to play right now in the league. Do you think that he can? You know, I do. I, I, I feel like... Uh, you know, he's, he's 21 years old. It's not like we were taking a ni- an 18 or a 19-year-old. He's 21 years old. He's had a few years of professional basketball under his belt, um, you know, playing overseas in France. He uh, physically, I think, is further along than Korkmaz, you know, mostly because of the age difference. And so, yes, I do. I, I think he's somebody that we'll really pay attention to uh, through that lens. 
Do you think last night, I know this is Brian's job more than yours. I'm sure uh, you were sitting close. Do you think you guys were close to getting another uh, pick last night? Um, I don't know if it was close. Uh, I, I think everybody, you know, talks about the effort. I think that is fair. I think that's true. I mean, this is my 16th NBA draft. You're in that room. It's one of the more exciting nights of the year. You know, you got five minutes to make a decision. You're on the clock, a lot of pressure, phones are ringing, deals, you know, all over the place. And I was encouraged with all the phone calls we got about our own players. You know, Jeremy and Covington and Stauskas and Nerlens and Jaleel and so on. And so whether the deal was really close, I don't think so. Um, and I'm sure, you know, every other team went through the same stuff. I think you just got to do that. Yeah, and I know there's so much about, you know, oh, do you guys prefer trading Noel or Okafor one over the other? Do other teams prefer one or the other? Your heads are probably spinning in that kind of situation. You say it's one of the more exciting nights of the year. Could you estimate for us how many times uh, Colangelo's phone rings last night? Every round it rings. There's 30 times it rings. It rings, you know, <laughs> you know probably 29 for 30. You know, and if, if I'm if I'm wrong, I'm I'm not wrong by much. It's you know, t- twenty five out of thirty. It's a lot. And people did did times. people call you for number one? You know, I don't. That's a good question. I I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I my my belief is no. I think people, you know, understand we we wouldn't part with that almost under any circumstance. Uh, but and I I don't know that for sure. Yeah. But every other every other time, you know, like it's just the way it goes. People are looking to do deals and you know move people's programs forward. But it's a it's a night if you were just a fly on the wall watching it all and listening and feeling, you know, the intense pressure. You it's like a Wall Street. You got just you know, and you're on the clock. You got to make a decision. And programs can go to the left or to the right. And so last night, me last night, I thought Brian did a heck of a job. It was a safe draft. We didn't do anything reckless. I like to do foreign kids that we chose. And uh, obviously the prize in the first pick is is well documented. Coach, uh, we'll leave you with, uh, with with this one here. You, we, last time we talked, we, you talked about the new uh, practice facility. Don't know when that's going to be ready, but if it's not, do you envision coming back down here to Stockton? You know, I love Stockton. Stockton treated us well. It was just a great part of uh, part of the state it was peaceful and uh, the facilities were excellent and so I would love to come back to Stockton if our practice facility wasn't available I think that it will be but if somebody said that it wasn't going to be um, the, the area the people down there the facilities the hotel everything was just a plus, so I wouldn't be disappointed if I learned that. And we would enjoy having you guys back. We enjoy having you guys a part of 97.3 ESPN and always catching up with you, Coach. I'm sure you're exhausted. It's been a, a wild week, and uh, Thursday free agency starts, so we'll let you start studying up for that. My pleasure. Thanks for having me.